Hello everyone, welcome to Koravi Foods. If you are new here, I will urge you to subscribe to my channel, like and share. Also click on the notification bell below to notify you anytime we upload a new video. I promise you are not going to regret doing so. In today's episode, we are going to learn how to make tozafi at home. Very quick and easy steps. Stay with me as we go through the process. So we start with our meat and this is our cow tribes, popularly known as Tawo in Ghana. Yes, and then this is the liver, as you can all see, that's the liver. And then the intestine, popularly known as runabout. There's no tozafi without runabout, yes. So that's the uh, runabout for you. And then we have our cow, cow meat itself too here. So that's the cow meat, as you can see, yes. Guys, this beautiful salmon is also ripping, so we are going to add it to our stew later on. Okay. And then this is our blended onion, garlic and ginger. This is salt, and then our onga maggi. We are going to add it to steam the meat. In fact, the meat, you can use any meat of your choice. You can use cow meat, you can use pork meat. You can use even chicken, depending on what you want. Some people doesn't eat uh, cow meat, others doesn't like pork. Whatever you want, anything of your choice is cool to me, yes. But Suozafi is normally eaten and it goes well with the intestines, the liver and the hominines, you understand? Yes. Please, we are adding a blended onion, garlic and ginger to the meat. In fact, be generous with that so that it will give it a good taste. Then you add your salt to it. Then you add your onga maggi to it. Guys, kindly be careful with your salt. It's better to add salt than to subtract salt. <laughs> and then note that you can add any spices of your choice to your meat. But me, I totally prefer a blended ginger garlic and onion for my meat and then i add a little salt and then uh, my onga maggi that's all for my meat um our aim is to get a natural taste as possible so that is what we are working towards okay so make sure you can you use any spices of your choice but then be careful you don't overuse them all right so now our meat is ready by then, if you have enough time, you have to marinate it for as long as you can. You can marinate it like 30 minutes, 25 minutes, as long as you have time, you know. But we don't have enough time here, so we are going to marinate it for like just 5 minutes. Then it will go onto the fire. So that I, in the beginning, I told it's going to be quick and simple. So we are going to do this as quick as possible. Yes, so after 5 minutes, our meat finally went on fire. There's our meat on fire and then, oh, sh it has started boiling already. We will be checking on our meat from time to time. So, guys, we are going to the Ayoyo. Wow, it's very green and fresh, as you can see. Yes, so it's time for us to pick Ayoyo. We have to pick it well so that all the other leaves that we don't want, the unwanted ones, we have to take them out and pick the right ones for our Ayoyo soup okay so guys you see the way i'm tearing it come closer yes the way i'm picking it that's not how you have to do it because if you do it that way you're not going to finish right now yes but then when you pick the ayoyo up hold the the the, the stock yes the the stock up there then you pull it through yes simple as that as simple as that or better still you hold the stock in the middle pull it to the right then you hold it in the middle again, pull it to the left. Then that's all. You remove it. It's easy and simple. Okay, so this is our water. This is our yo-yo. We put it in the water. We added salt. In fact, I washed it like three times. So this is the third one. I want it to be soaked a little with salt so that, in fact, everything I wanted will go away. Yes. And then we are checking on our meat. See, our meat is... In fact, it is ready. Yes. So our yo-yo is going on fire. And then, you see, the yo-yo, before you cook the yo-yo, you have to put water on fire. You don't cook it with 
the cold water cooking ayoyo is very simple but very delicate so you have to be very strategic in cooking it you understand yes so you you bring water to a boil and then you um put the ayoyo inside be careful not to burn your hands okay all right so when after doing that you, you just check the, the, the water, the consistency of the water. Make sure the water is not too much. If the water is too much, you may not get the consistency you want. The water should be on the same level with the ayoyo. It shouldn't be more than the ayoyo. You understand? As you can see, yes, I think this is perfect. In fact, I don't want my ayoyo to be too watery. And I don't want it to be too thick either. The water is just perfect for me. Moving forward, you add your dawa dawa to the ayoyo. Yes, you add your dawa dawa. That's the dawa dawa you can see over there. You add it to the ayoyo. And this is pepper. You see, my client likes pepper in the ayoyo. So it's optional, totally optional. You can choose not to put it inside. So I'm putting the pepper inside so that you can give it a little a, a spicy taste. Yes. So after that, this is my salt pita which is popularly known as kelm in Ghana, kelm. So you put your kelm. The kelm, be careful you don't give it much. If you add too much, you're going to spoil your ayoyo. And if it's too little, too, it's not going to work perfectly for you. So you have to measure it very well. And then you add your salt. The salt, be careful because there will be salt in the stew, the tomato stew you prepare. So you have to be careful of the salt as well. Please bring your ayoyo to boil. Please don't overcook your ayoyo. Otherwise, wahala day. Yes. So you, you check on your ayoyo and make sure not to overcook it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you want to know if it's ready, you just take your spatula and pick some. Then you, you check if it's soft. Yes, you check. As you pick, you check if it's soft. If it's soft, then that means the ayoyo is ready. If it's ready, you just take off, take it off the fire. You don't want to overcook it. Otherwise, you may not get what you wanted. Yes, you check it like this. If it's ready, yes. So now, our ayoyo is ready. You are going to off the fire and go straight into blending it. We'll blend it as hot as it is. But if your blender cannot contain the heat, let it cool down. Other than that, you might have some casualties. Blend your ayoyo like two seconds, just two seconds. You understand? You don't want to over blend it. And then you pour it into a bowl. Our ayoyo is ready. So at this stage, you don't add anything to it. Don't add water. Don't add salt. Don't add anything. Otherwise, it will be watery and you will not like that. Ah, guys, me okay. Look at that ayoyo. In fact, mm, look at that. How slimy it is. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is what we are looking for. Okay, guys, we are moving to the second stage of our cooking process. And we are going to do the tomato stew. As you can see, these are tomatoes, our chopped tomatoes, our green pepper, our onions, our ginger and garlic. The onion, I have some blended already. So we are using just few for this. We'll add that one later. And then we have our dawa dawa to aside. That's our dawa dawa. Yes, we are using this for the tomatoes too. Yes, you have to put the dawa dawa in the tomatoes too as well. So this is what we are going to use. And then we are going to blend this together. Because um, it's too much for the blender, we have separated the tomatoes from the others. So we are blending the tomato, we are blending the pepper, garlic, ginger, and onion together and then we'll blend the tomatoes too separately yes so as you can see we are adding tomato paste to our stew we'll add it to the stew so these are blended prepper these are tomato paste and then the blended tomatoes as well as you can see without wasting much time i put my oil on fire and grate my dawa dawa into the oil that is red oil for you I'm grating the dawa dawa because I want it to incorporate very well into the oil. So quickly, you add your onion to the oil so that it cooks very well with the dawa dawa in the red oil. Yes, and you, you want that aroma to come out, that dawa dawa aroma. You want it to come out so you make it cook very well. And guys, the aroma in here right now is heavenly. In fact, oh, you can't imagine. All right, so then 
you move ahead and pour your blended tomatoes into the red oil. The blended tomatoes into the red oil. Then you add your blended pepper, ginger, garlic, and onion into the red oil as well. You stir it very well. Then you allow it to cook for some time. Guys, if you've watched the video to this point, then that means you are enjoying this video. I'll urge you to subscribe, like, and share so that in case of any updates, you'll be notified. Please kindly click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime we upload a video. Our stew had already started boiling, so we put our tomato paste into red, then we stir it gently. Be careful, guys, because at this point, the stew can splatter on your body or even your hands. If you look closely on my hand, you can see some marks there. Yes, I had it from a similar experience, and guys, mm -mm, it wasn't easy at all. It wasn't funny at all. So please look for your shen guard. In fact, when do your tomato stew? I mean, yeah. So this stage, we have to cover it for it to boil a little more and make sure to stir it regularly because it might stick and burn under the pan. Yes, yeah, so we put our salmon. We have to mash or break some of the salmon into the stew to incorporate it so that we'll get that feeling of the salmon in the stew. Then the, we, we add the remaining later. Yeah, the remaining pieces will be added later. Please stir gently. I bet you know that our aim is to avoid splatters on the skin. Yes. And the ayoyo, lest I forget, if you don't have a blender to blend the ayoyo, um, you can use the traditional way. Yes. So the ayoyo, we have the traditional way and then the blender method. So if you don't have the blender, don't worry at all. I will make another video to teach you on how to use the traditional method. That one, it's a, a type of broom. That we used to beat the ayoyo. Yes, yeah, so I will teach you how to do that one too in my next video. Yes, yeah, so we are adding our salmon to the stew. And in fact, as I was busy with my stew, the Holy Spirit just prompted me to look back. And lo and behold, I saw a human cat. In fact, opening my meat. Oh my God. My meat too. That was how I shouted, Blood of Jesus. She was like, No, I didn't touch. I said, No, I didn't ask you anything just give it to me and then i just pack my thing pack my meat I have to carry it on my head and that is how i decided to fast track everything so that the meat can go into the stew as fast as possible because if i don't take it mm, wahala yes so i put my onga maggi into the stew and then added the green pepper in fact, the green pepper, some people like the stew to be very pepperish. So I decided to add this so that in case the one in the stew isn't enough, they can make use of the ones I drop in the stew. Because children are also going to eat the food as well. Yes, so family, finally, 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 I decided to put the meat into the stew. And in fact, mm -mm, some people were eyeing me. I me here and there I never cared you see so I'm adding the stock and I don't add salt to my tomato stew because um the, the stock from the meat has enough salt already so I don't have to add it so after adding everything and it still needs salt then I just adjust the taste with a little bit of salt and in fact <laughs> Look at the stew. Wow. Everything is wrapping inside. See towel. See towel. See runabout. See meat. See someone. Everything is wrapping inside. In fact, when they a friend of Soko, Nema, Pe, Eye, Soko, Soko, Soko. Hmm. Still, when they buy the Angasa, it is going to be dope. In fact, you needed to be here to just smell the aroma. Everything is, in fact, on point. Yes. So, at this moment, we allow our stew to boil for a while. Yes, we let it boil. Yes, because we want the, 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 the meat to, to, to soak some of the stew. And then I'm adding onion because I want this the a taste of some crunchiness in the stew. I usually use white pepper and curry powder for this particular recipe. Yes, I put the white pepper and the curry powder in my tomato stew. 
but then guys hmm, as i was saying i i looked for this white paper everywhere in the kitchen i didn't see the white paper i searched and searched and searched i didn't see the white paper so i decided to use the curry powder yes and guys the aroma in here is so great it's it's so great our stew is almost ready we will allow it to simmer for a while and then we will take it off the fire because it's almost ready it's almost ready we then move on to the final part of our cooking process and this is our tozavi flour and then the kukunti flour yes so we mix the kukunti flour with the tozavi flour and the tozavi flour we are taking three cups of the flour and then we'll take one and a half cups of the kukunti flour which is the cassava flour yes yeah, so this is the corn flour and then the cassava flour will mix it for the tozafi in fact we want it to have this um, um smoothness or we want it to have this texture i don't know how to say it but then you have to mix it so that's how come we are adding the kukundi to the tozafi flour then we move on to prepare the cocoa for the tozafi so you you just fetch one cup of the tozafi into a bowl then we'll add a considerable amount of water to the flour in the bowl because we are going to mix it up we'll mix the flour with the water to get it ready for the cocoa that is the porridge, the tozabi porridge. Meanwhile, our water is on fire, yes. So we pour the mixture into the hot water and stir it continuously. You have to stir it continuously, otherwise it will form lumpy. It will be lumpy, yes. And we don't want our cocoa to be lumpy, otherwise it will affect the tozabi as well. So our water is not enough, so we add some. We add some to it and then you leave it on the fire and allow it to boil. Let it boil very well. I mean, let it cook very well before you add your flour to it. So at this moment, we are adding our flour. In fact, this particular, um, let's say, formula, it's not my style. But this is the traditional way it's been done. This is not my style. If you are not careful to form lamps, but then I have to do this one to teach you or show you how it's been done. Yes, this is not my style. If you are not careful, it will form lampy. Yes. So maybe in my next video, I will give you the real one, the one I like, which is very simple for me. Yes. Obian in a style. Yeah, so after everything, you stir it very well. Stir, oh, stir, 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 stir. Otherwise, it will form lamp, 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 lamp. And then, guys, before you put the flour into the hot uh, cocoa or the porridge, you have to lower the fire, I mean the gas. Otherwise, straight up, it will form lamps. Okay, so you stir very well in other not to form lamps. Guys, it looks like our chosen fit is going to be hard. So the remaining porridge left, we have to pour it on the cook, on the, on the, uh, soza fee, yes, so that it can soften it. When you pour the, uh, cocoa or the porridge on the chosen fee, you have to wait a little, let it boil a little bit, then you can start stirring. Guys, don't forget, you are looking out for... A doughy, sticky, smooth, and soft tozafi. You understand? So, the more you give it more water, the more it becomes soft. The more you give it water, the more it becomes smooth and sticky. You understand? And we added the cassava flour because we wanted it to be doughy and sticky. Yes, so that is our main motive of this tozafi. And the tozafi is best eaten when soft. It should be softer than bangkun. That is tozafi. Tozafi, if it is very hard, it's not tozafi, it is banku. So let's make it soft as possible. Tozafi, dear, do you hear any cocoa? Cocoa, just pour the cocoa and it will become soft. Ouch! In fact, look at that. Mm. 
very soft very soft and sticky yeah soft and sticky soft and sticky in fact guys our toaster plate is ready it is very much ready so you see making toaster plate is not difficult at all it's as easy as you can see yes very easy so now guys our toaster plate is ready so we are dishing it out to wrap it very well in order to keep it hot yes hot and organized or better still you can still dish it into your bowl and start enjoying it anyways congratulations to us so we are done and then the client brought this bowl this two power bowl very nice beautiful and firm and then she was like bidash this two power bowl is very expensive we'll handle it with i was like i know ma sorry ma <clears throat> so when she left i was like this woman cannot come and threaten my life with this bowl. How much is this bowl that I cannot buy? Hmm, I lie. I don't have shish. Pobo. I don't have. <laughs> so that was how I dished out all the food, the tomato stew, the ayoyo, and then the soda fee, and packaged it very well, ready for pickup. Guys, thank you very much for staying with me throughout this tutorial thank you very much god bless you if you haven't subscribed yet kindly subscribe okay just click on the notification bell so that anytime i upload a new video it will notify you it will let you know that we have something new on board guys just share like tell a friend to tell a friend that something new and good is here so that they can also subscribe like and start sharing in fact the aim of this all is for us to learn and make cooking very easy and simple for us thank you god bless you see you another time bye